We are now going to demonstrate how to build a tree diagram for a probability experiment. So suppose we have a coin with two sides and we are going to consider a probability experiment for flipping this coin. And how many outcomes are there in this experiment? Well, when you flip a coin, there are two outcomes. You can either get heads or you can get tails. So a very, very simple tree diagram for this probability experiment demonstrates the event. And then from the event, there are two branches that are going to branch out to the two outcomes. And I'm abbre abbreviating these outcomes H for heads and T for tails. So if there happen to be three outcomes to an experiment, you're going to have three branches. But in this case, there's just two, so um, heads and tails. And then after the two outcomes are, are written on the tree, you're going to create a list of outcomes to the right of the tree. And this is an extremely simple experiment, just flipping a coin once, so there are only two outcomes, heads and tails. So we can make this a little bit more complicated. We can choose to flip the coin twice and build an experiment on flipping the coin twice. So again, we have two sides. So in one coin flip, there are two outcomes. And in two coin flips, it changes. There are more than two outcomes. So let's take a look at what happens. When you build a tree diagram, you start, to, you start with the first event, which is flipping the coin once. And from that event, you list the two outcomes that are possible. Then, because there is a second event, flipping the coin another time, you are going to branch off of each of these two outcomes to additional outcomes. Flip a coin again. You can get heads or tails or heads or tails. So when you flip a coin twice, the tree diagram definitely grows and it expands from, from a simple two branch to now um, in this final column here we have four branches. Now what this first uh, path um, refers to, this refers to the first coin flip and this is the second coin flip. So if you flip the coin once and you get a heads and you flip it a second time and you get another heads, this outcome is referred to as HH or heads heads, getting two heads. Then if you think about, if you look at the next outcome that's possible, you can flip the coin and get heads and then flip it again and get tails. So the next outcome that's possible is heads tails. And we are going to traverse through the tree until we traverse through every possible outcome and then we'll have them all listed to the right of our tree. Tails, heads, and then one more time, tails, tails. So we're making sure that we hit all four outcomes and then when we are done, we're going to label them here. So our outcomes, heads, 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 tails tails, heads, tails, tails. How many outcomes do we have? There are four outcomes when you flip a coin twice. And these are the four. Okay, so we can abbreviate these outcomes with HH, HT, TH, and TT. And then based on these outcomes, we can answer some probability questions. So here's a more complex probability question that we could answer by looking at our tree diagram. What's the probability of getting two tails in two coin flips? Now, most new students to probability aren't going to know this immediately, but if you look at a tree diagram, it becomes a little bit more clear. This is the number of outcomes. So remember that the total number of outcomes is what we put in the denominator of our probability calculation. And in the numerator of our probability calculation, we put the number of ways to get that outcome, the specific outcome here, which is getting two tails. So if we look at all of our, all four of our outcomes and we look at the one way in which we can get two tails, there's only one way that it can happen. 
none of the other outcomes have two tails. So there is one out of four ways to get two tails. So as a fraction, it's 1 over 4. As a decimal, it's 0.25. And as a percent, 25%. If we change this a bit and use the phrase at least one tail, well, now we're referring to a different set of these outcomes. The number of outcomes is still four, but at least one tail refers to one tail or two tails. So we have one, two, three outcomes in our list of outcomes that satisfy the criteria for at least one tail. Three out of four is 0.75 or 75%. And that's how you would answer this question.